Today's video is all about printing, but in true cynicism form, I'm going to look at the more negative side of printing and ask the question, why would anybody own a printer? So in my last video, I photographed this image and I really like this photograph and for reasons unbeknown to me, it struck me as being an image that would be fantastic in print and that's what I wanted to do in today's video and at the same time, I had a couple of prints that I was doing for some clients. So, massive thank you to Jenna and Sebastian. Your prints will be on their way shortly. Another thing, actually, before I get into this printing video. So, I, uh, I received a gift in the post now. I don't know if you remember, but a couple of months ago, I lost my beloved hat in Iceland. Do, 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 do. Can you believe it's been returned to me? Apart from it hasn't been returned to me, it's actually something more amazing than that has happened. So, uh, Kay Scott, apologies Kay, I don't know your, uh, your full name. Kay Scott sent me a letter and a hat. And they heard I lost my hat. And then they looked at my video footage, figured out the pattern of the hat, and they stitched me <laughs> a replica hat. Now, unfortunately what they didn't know is that I have a very small and narrow head. So, it doesn't quite fit. So, um, if anybody has a bigger, wider head and would like this hat, just leave a comment below um, and then I'll, I don't know, I'll see if I can reach out to you and you can have this hat. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for that. But yeah, on with the video. Okay, so that's the image I'm going to print. I haven't done anything yet, so you're going to follow the whole process from scratch, start to finish. But before we get into that, I have to ask the question, why would anyone want to own a printer, or why would anybody want to buy a printer? So let's look at the reasons not to print yourself. Let's look at the reasons not to have your own printer. Uh, the first one is cost, okay? Um, now, I'm, I'm only gonna base this off the equipment that I have. Yeah, I, I was doing some calculations, and, uh, right. The cost of my printer, um, if you were to buy it online from a reputable photo dealer, and this is a Canon Pro 1000, is 800, and 99 pounds, let's call it 900 pounds. And then of course, you need some ink. Now the ink for this printer, I think it takes like 12 cartridges, uh, which is great because you get a huge color range in your image, just great color and, and, and everything and all of the stuff that I don't understand. Um, but to buy a set of inks and chroma optimizers and all that sort of stuff is from a reputable dealer, 469 pounds. So you can see the totals adding up. Now that doesn't take into account the paper. The paper I use, uh, that I'm going to use for printing this image, um, is uh, a Baraita paper, it's 300 GSM. It's a very high quality paper, it's a fine art paper, it's very nice, but for a box of 25 sheets, A2 is 123 pounds and 49 pence. So that's about four pounds 93 pence per sheet. And I've done some sums here, let's just say, all test printing aside, let's say you've got your printer set up, you've got your paper profiles loaded, you're happy and you're confident. Let's say you have a, a year. In your first year, you photograph 30 key, that's a good year, 30 keepers, 30 images you consider worthwhile printing. Um, now, if you were to print 30 images in your first year, um, and when you take into account the cost of the printer and the cost of the ink, so not the paper, just the printer and the ink, this printer and the ink. The cost is um, <laughs> £45.60 per print. So that's based on 30 prints. And then you've got to add on the paper cost as well. And what did we say? It was £4.93 a sheet. So that is, let's, let's call it 50 quid. So that's £50 per A2 print cost price to you, the consumer, if you've just bought this printer, a set of ink, some paper, and it's your first year, and you've got 30 images that you want to print. Now that doesn't take into consideration, like I say, test prints and all that sort of stuff. 50 quid, 50 quid, 50 quid a print. 50 squiddly diddlies. What's that in US dollars? I don't know, $70 maybe? I'm not sure of the exchange rate. What's that in euros? 60 euros, 63 euros, something like that. It's expensive. And I've never really done these sums until now. Um, and the question has to be asked, it has to be. Why? Why would you 
why would you want that expense in your life? Like I said before, that doesn't include test printing. Printing, initially, printing can be quite difficult. You've, you've, you've got to set the whole thing up. You've got to get your paper profiles from your manufacturers, which is tricky if you're buying and testing lots and lots of different papers. So that takes time and that's more expense. You could easily spend another 100, 200 pounds just on buying different papers and testing that and ink and stuff like that. And then you've got to replace the ink. So it's not like you put in 12 cartridges and then two years later, those 12 cartridges say, right, we need replacing. No, it's, you know, one cartridge might last five years, whereas something like cyan or yellow or matte black, that might go every two months. So you're constantly replacing, you know, one cartridge here, one cartridge there. So it's very difficult to manage. And those cartridges, if you buy them individually, I think, what did I say for a full set? Four, six, nine individually there. More than that, it varies depending on which one you get, but they're about anywhere from 37 to 45 pounds and you don't want to buy third-party knockoff cartridges if you're printing fine art prints It's just don't, I'm not even going to go there um, So yeah, it's really really expensive and then things go wrong You know, I've I've printed prints <laughs> then, then turned around with the print in my hand and boof knocked it on the corner of a table or something and just, just split the whole thing right in half so that happens um, And I was looking I was looking let me see so the alternative, what's the alternative? I was looking. Uh, the alternative is to not uh, go to all this expense and just use a lab. Now, why would you do that rather than print your own? Well, uh, let's, I'm gonna use the lab that I use, which is Digilab or Digital Lab um, as, as an example here. So the main benefit is cost and no stress, zero stress. Uh, in my experience, Digilab have nailed it every single time. The prints look fantastic, and you can get an A2 size print there or thereabouts, 20 by 16. That's about A2. You can get a 20 by 16 print from Digilab for £11.25 um, versus what would be, you know, what did you say, £50, which would be £50. So £11.25. And you get that in a couple of days, maybe, uh, two or three days, although I'm sure you could request a quicker one, but you'd be looking at a, a few days. But then I thought to myself, <laughs> I thought to myself, do you know what, that's not really a fair comparison because that £11.25 print is gonna be on just like, you know, a fairly lightweight photo paper, shall we say. I don't know the specs of the paper they use for their basic photo prints. So looking at their fine art prints, let's do a fine art Baraita, which is the same paper I use. It's not the same uh, brand, but you know, it's, it's I use a fine art Baraita, this is a fine art Baraita. And <laughs> for a 20 by 16 on fine art Baraita is 36 pounds 50. So that's quite expensive, but again, you don't have the stress. Now, I am based all my costs on printing 30 images a year at home. If you were to print a lot more than that over time, that cost is going to come down, and you'd probably be looking at about the same, I reckon. You know, overall cost um, from getting one done in a lab to doing it at home. Um, I'd say it's going to be about the same. You know, eventually yours will creep down the more you print and the more you use your machine and the more prints you get out of it. Let's look at the positives for owning a print. Let's forget cost, okay? We've spent thousands on cameras, we've spent thousands on lenses, we've spent thousands on travel. You know, we've got a nice desk and, you know, some nice software. Um, I think a printer could be the final piece of the puzzle. Um, for example, this image I've got home, I want to print it, but I want to do it. I want, I want to be tactile with the image, you know, I want to, I want to create a printable version. I want to, I, I've been there, I've suffered in the cold, I've taken the photograph, I've edited the image, now I want to print it. And there is a certain satisfaction that comes with that, a certain, I don't know, like, like typical kind of man locked away in his cave creating something, or man in a shed, you know, there's that feeling, it's, it really does feel like you are creating something, because it's always a little bit more than just clicking file and print, you know, you've got to load your paper profile, re-edit the image, I'm going to do all of this in a minute, and I realise this video's getting on a bit, actually, never, never meant for it to be this long. It's one of those things, printing at home, in, yeah, in your head, it doesn't make sense. You know, you're gonna run out of wall space. You know, friends and family are gonna be sick of getting prints from you at Christmas. And 
it's expensive, it really is. But when you look at it, you know, when you when you think about it from an emotional point of view, an emotional standpoint, you know, from your heart rather than your head, it's very similar to buying a car. You know, a car is a car, it gets you from A to B. You spend 15 grand on a new car, it's gonna do the job great. Or you could spend 45 grand on a new car and it's, you know, it's gonna, it's not a sensible decision. And I would say buying a printer, ink and paper isn't necessarily a sensible decision. My accountant would hate it. You know, on a spreadsheet, it looks terrible. But again, it comes down to having that hands-on relationship with your own work and seeing the process all the way through from idea to print. That is something special. And I would say that trumps everything I've just talked about. And I guess that is why you would own a printer. So there, I just went, you know, we just wanted to look at the negatives and the positives in this video. I hope, uh, I hope, you know, you're taking that on board. And you know, you don't have to buy this printer and expensive paper. You can do it a lot cheaper. But generally speaking, the cheap, I've got experience. I bought a Pro 10S, which is a mid-range printer, cheaper than the one I've got, which is a Pro 1000. And let me tell you, the initial outlay is cheaper, but the running costs are more expensive. So I'm now gonna print this image, and I'm gonna do it from scratch. I'm gonna approach it uh, from fresh, because I haven't looked at printing this photograph before. If at any point during this video you get a bit lost or you don't understand what I'm talking about, um, I did another print video here last year that goes into a lot more detail. So that might be worth watching if you don't quite understand what I'm talking about here. But let's go, I'm in Lightroom, I'm in the develop module. Now the first thing, I want to do is press S on my keyboard. S is soft proof. When you look at an image uh, in soft proofing, then it gives you a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like when it's printed. Um, but what you need to do is make sure that the correct paper profile is applied. And in this case, I'll be printing this on Baraita 300. And here we have Baraita 300 personal profile. Most paper manufacturers will do you a personal profile. And what that's done is it's changed the image and it's made it a bit darker and a bit flatter, and, and that's, that's generally what happens. Uh, so what I need to do is bring this image back to where it was before I hit soft proof, but before I do that, I want to make sure I create a proof copy, and that is so that I don't make changes to my master file to the original image, the one that I'm gonna share online. This will be the print version. Now, how I know it's a print version is because all of my images that have been edited for print are labeled with the color blue, and then, well, I know, it's nice and easy. So this looks, as it is, looks pretty good. To be fair, it's quite an easy image to print. There's not much color. It's fairly well balanced image, and so it should be quite straightforward to print. Uh, I'm looking at it here on a 5K Retina display um, on my iMac, and that is not gonna give me an accurate representation of how it's gonna look. Um, this monitor, this is a BenQ SW271, now this is a matte monitor. Now this is going to give me a far more realistic sort of version of how the image will look when printed. This is a professional photo monitor by BenQ, it's very good. And yeah, I will be, I'll be looking at this when I go to print, not this. But here's the, here's the conundrum, here's the quandary, here's the, here's the issue. <laughs> um, when I do a screen record, which I'm doing now because all this is live, it greys out this monitor. You know, QuickTime greys this monitor out. So, um, yeah, what you're seeing here isn't actually correct, and that's something I'll just deal with. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. The joys of making YouTube videos, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we've got our virtual copy here, and as I said, it looks pretty good. Um, the histogram looks great, it looks lovely and bright. What I would like to do is bring in a touch more contrast and I would like to brighten the top half of the image, uh, not with a crop tool. I would like to brighten it using a graduated filter tool. Now here we are on exposure, I'm just gonna pull it down here. Bit of a soft edge, there we go. And I'm just gonna increase the exposure Oh, just a tiny bit. Don't want to clip those highlights. That looks pretty good, but what I'm going to do to be safe is create a virtual copy of this image here and give this one two stars so I know the difference. 
and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do a slightly different edit on it. What I'll do is I'll get rid of the graduated filter and instead I will apply a, an increase in exposure to the whole image. Just, there you go, 0 0.15, you know, very, very minor. My histogram is just in. Um, contrast, I'm gonna leave the same and there we go, we have two marginally different images, but when you print them, you should be able to see uh, the difference between the two. It'll be more exaggerated. So, these two, that was pretty quick and easy. Like I say, I didn't have to do much because it's a very straightforward image. Um, these two look great. I am now going to print them on one sheet of paper side by side, and I can just compare the two. So let me go into the print tab at the top, the two images are now side by side. Let me just give them a bit of space here. Okay, so there we go. We've got the two images side by side. We've got the brighter one. <laughs> the difference is so marginal, it's very difficult for me to tell which is which. Um, I do need to know this though. I might have to, I might have to do something here to one of them. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to very quickly go back into the develop module. So on one of the images I'm just going to make a mark in the corner. And then I'm, that's just so I know. <laughs> this is how I roll professional industry printing here guys. The first thing I need to do, very important, make sure the correct paper profile is loaded, uh, which it isn't, smooth cotton at the minute. So there we go, Beretta 300 and oh look at this error, this is where we could go wrong. See this? Paper A4. That would have been a mistake. Let's get this down to A2 borderless. Okay, oh man. Okay, so let's change the size of my image. I wanna, let me sell size. Uh, there we go. Just increase the cell size. Now we're back to normal. Okay, so we've got the correct paper there. Now I'm gonna click printer. This is all very straightforward. Canon Pro 1000, and we've got quality media. And then we want to go top feed, yep, correct, semi-gloss, yep, the paper I'm using, the, the manufacturer of the paper will give you instructions on what, how to, what paper to select in order to print it most accurately. In this one, in this case, with mine, which is photo speed, it says choose semi-gloss. So here we go, paper plus semi-gloss, print quality, always the highest, and then it's simply file and Okay, so here we have the final print. Well, no, not the final print. Here we have the uh, the test print side by side. And now I'm at quite an advantage because I have these studio lights above my head and in front of me here. So I'm actually looking at these under very good lighting conditions, but I would also hold them up against a window as well in an ambient room light. But for the purposes of this video, this is fine. The image that I prefer is the one, the second proof that I did. So I created a virtual copy and then another one where I got rid of the graduated filter and just overall increased the brightness by, what was it, 0.15 um, and then a bit of contrast, no, no, contrast plus 20. It's marginal, it's marginal, but you can see the one on the left here is uh, is just that, has that bit more of a pop, that it's a bit brighter. And uh, yeah, that is now ready to print full page. And then hopefully we'll be done. Right. So there we go. The image has been printed and it looks fantastic at 20 by 16 or A2 there or thereabouts. Looks, yeah. Pretty good, very happy with that. And I think I'll look after this one. No fingerprints, hold it by the edges. I'll get this framed and uh, I think there'll be a place for it on the wall back there. So I hope that you have found this video useful. Um, you know, yeah, a bit, bit of consumer advice in there and a few tips. So yeah, take it as you will. But thank you so much for watching. And join me next time as we venture into an ice cave after shooting in minus 25. So it was a cold one. So yeah, lots of good stuff to come. 
Um, but yeah, for now, I think I might visit my local frame shop, purchase a frame, get this bad boy hung on the wall. So, until then, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Well, this is just absolutely phenomenal. Huge crack and I felt the ice should have beneath my feet. Camera there is, <laughs> is frozen solid. You know, I just want to let you know that I have come around and I am finally having a nice time. <laughs>